Well, nice to meet you, Veronica. Why don't we start with just give me your name, your title, and the, your role. I'm Veronica Parker Hahn. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Oscar Insurance. And basically that means I oversee all of our marketing and consumer outreach efforts. And you just won an Effie for um, bringing humility to health insurance. Um, tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that campaign. The inspiration is the company. So Oscar is about three years old. Uh, we are a startup um, based out of New York. And uh, basically the company was built to kind of change the health insurance industry. So it's an industry that's pretty inhuman. Um, they don't really focus on the individual. It's hard to navigate. And our founders saw an opportunity to create a company that really focused on the individual and brought simplicity and transparency and a, a big component of humanity to the healthcare experience. And so that's part of the ethos of the company and that ethos drove the marketing campaign. So we wanted to be friendly and approachable um, and human and bring out the personality of the company that had been developing. And uh, I think we accomplished that throughout the campaign. That's a big endeavor to do a startup insurance company. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the team like that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, some of the smartest people I have ever worked with across the board. Um, when I joined the company, we were 23 people and now we're at probably somewhere over 200. So we're rapidly growing, but uh, it's a group of people who are really passionate about what we're doing, um, are really innovative, creative, uh, and, and really thoughtful about the consumer and the individuals we're helping. So uh, it's, it's, it's a great space to work in. So you've got a great product to market, the company itself. Yeah. Um, are there, is there any research or tools or, or insights that you're trying to capture to drive your marketing effort? Absolutely. Well, at the heart of everything we do as a company is the individual. So as a company, we don't offer group insurance. We don't work with big companies. We really are offering um, insurance to individual people and their families. So we're on the healthcare exchange here in New York and New Jersey. Um, and then we're, we're available outside of that as well. So thinking about who we're insuring down to the every, every single person drives the product, drives what we're building, drives our plans. And from a, a, a marketing research perspective, we did a lot of work to understand what the uninsured population looked like with the implementation of these healthcare exchanges. Um, who are we speaking to? Where do they live? What are their passion points? Um, how do they perceive the health insurance industry? And how can we you know, stand out and change their minds when it comes to, to working with Oscar? So it really is about like everyday people influencing what we do. So Oscar's got a unique position in the marketplace or a voice, if you will. Um, how does, where'd that come from? Was that something developed over time um, or was it always there? I think it was always there. Um, you know, even when I was kind of like interviewing with the company and uh, you know, there were 10 people at the company, uh, that, that brand personality, that brand persona um, it's inspired by the people who built the company, truthfully. Uh, people who wanted to change an industry that like confused even them at the start. Um, and so kind of this concept of going against the status quo for the benefit of people um, was always there. I always picked up on that. Um, and then it, it came to the, this idea of like, okay, well, how far do you push it? Do you do you really say that with attitude? Do you say it in a loving way? Do you say it in a friendly way? Um, you know, probably my personal preferences as a marketer influence a lot of that. But um, you know, there's so much sappy advertising out there when it comes to healthcare companies, and rightfully so, it, it really impacts your life. Um, but you know, we had a story to tell. We wanted to talk about why we were entering this industry. Um, and what we were trying to do and launching a campaign in New York for New Yorkers gave us a ton more freedom to have, you know, attitude in what we were, in what we were saying and how we were saying it. So it's a very unique voice. How did you make sure that customers, especially coming from a, another insurance company, 
how did how did you make sure that they could trust you? We listened to them. Um, I, you know, I can't say that we went out and tested you know any of our our original messaging because we didn't. Um, you know, given the time, but also just given how strongly we felt about the campaign. Um, but you know, we interact with our with our members on a regular basis. You know, through our customer service team, through our healthcare guides, and so uh, you know, hearing from them what they liked, you know, what what was important to them, um, and we still do that. That that's a key component of what we do. Um, but then also realizing like we're consumers too. And, you know, we're not coming from this space of never, ever bought, you know, buying health insurance before. We've been there. And so the frustrations and the experience of, of, of you know, buying health care and, and how hard that is, you know, they were infused into the campaign. So we were coming at it from a, from a consumer perspective as well. So making marketing decisions are a lot of times hard, and especially in, I would imagine, in a startup where there's probably some fairly passionate leader driving the company in certain sure. directions. Uh, do you lean on anything to help guide those decisions or to convince the folks which direction you need to go? Well, when I started at the company, I started in July of 2013. We launched our first round of marketing in October of 2013. Um, and at the time, uh, the marketing team was a department of one, and we relied on um, you know external agencies to help round out that team. So uh, there was a need to just get going. So, um, you know, like there was a need for expediency and, and, you know, just understanding that we were all in it together. Thankfully, we had a strong strategy to start. And so that led to making decisions in a quick and easy way when we first started. So that was easy. But just also understanding like what the company was really standing for, the ethos of the company, um, understanding the passion of the people behind it, myself included, and infusing that in the marketing made the process um, quite fun. I mean, it was definitely challenging because we were, you know, basically building the plane while flying it at the same time. But uh, you know, all the decisions had to happen quickly because we had a deadline. So um, everyone came together in a really collaborative way to make it happen. Were there any gaps or kind of leaps of faith in your understanding of what you needed to do? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Gosh, where do I start? Um, you know, because we were a startup, because we were a tech startup, so there's like, you know, there are, um, there's great technology behind everything we do. Um, some of our leadership comes from the tech world, so we were coming at it from that angle. Um, and that's a space that traditionally hasn't worked with some of the standard marketing platforms that we use today. Um, you know, we ended up testing the use of out of home and being on the subways here in New York. Um, traditional you know, digital advertising, we even tested radio. And a lot of those platforms just aren't platforms that are natural to the tech space. So like getting the team to agree to test those platforms was a huge leap of faith. Um, and if anyone knows Oscar, they know that uh, we're, we've even gone further into that world. Um, but it was important to get in front of the consumers um, it was important to tell our story and make sure that people really internalized it. And so some of those platforms that were unfamiliar to folks internally ended up working well for us. Okay. Yeah. Any advice for folks that might be in your similar position trying to make that convincing argument? Um, you, you have to back it up with data. Um, but you also have to have the trust of your team that you're going to test this, learn from it, and optimize moving forward. Um, and that's what got me through, you know, like we're going to put a stake in the ground to start, but that doesn't mean that we're stuck with it throughout the entire campaign. Um, and one of the things that we do, if not on a daily basis, on a weekly basis when we're marketing is constantly um, studying how things are performing, optimizing that across the board, and then continuing to do that mo moving forward. So um, I think people trusted the idea of being able to test and learn as we went throughout the campaign. So winning an FE is about marketing effectiveness. How do you define effectiveness in marketing? Um, you know, for us, it's, it's, of course, bringing consumers in, right? Growing our membership, but also ensuring that the, what we're saying from a marketing perspective ties back to what we're actually doing as a company. So if we were to go out and say Oscar's friendly and simple and human, and you got the opposite experience as a member, then we weren't really doing our job. 
Um, but what we were really doing was portraying, you know, what Oscar's really all about um, naturally. Um, and the loop, the, you know, the closed loop there really does exist. So we're friendly on the outside and probably even more so for, for our members when they join. Um, and then to have our members actually evangelize about us in a natural way without being prompted um, is a cherry on top. And we definitely have that when you look at our social media feeds and what people are saying about us. Okay. So stepping back a little bit from the campaign, mm -hmm. thinking about you, um, you've achieved quite a bit of success. So what is it that fuels Veronica? Um, I love to be challenged. I mean, who, who starts, you know, at a startup and then has to launch a campaign, right. you know, three months later? It's kind of crazy. Um, but, you know, I think whenever I feel like I've done this before is when I have to kind of look for the next opportunity. But, you know, as I'm being constantly challenged, I, like, I enjoy that. And I, I kind of want to dig in more and see what I can do. Marketers tend to be a student of marketing and, and follow other brands. I'm curious, you know, what kind of brands you look to or, or follow yourself and, and, and why? It's all kinds of brands. Mm -hmm. um, there's something really interesting happening in New York right now where startups and tech companies are starting to kind of find their voice from a marketing perspective. Um, and in a way that's part of like Oscar's ecosystem. So, you know, I'm paying attention to some of those brands that are starting to do their advertising on the subways um, or starting to do, you know, more digital advertising. You know, one that's out there right now is Casper. Um, you know, there's another company called Namely. They're all trying to, you know, test out their voice. So it's really interesting to see. So I'm looking at those smaller brands, but then also those kind of like bigger emerging brands. Um, you know, Beats is really interesting, They're, especially with the, the last World Cup and them kind of trying to take over this, this space of, you know, sports and entertainment and just trying to see, how, you know, how they're going to evolve and solidify that persona over time is really cool. Um, and then I'm also looking at like the bigger, like older established companies because a company like GE has been around for forever um, and continues to innovate in their marketing. So it's not just about like the newbie that just comes up and is trying something different and flashy, but it's looking at the, you know, variety of brands um, in different life stages just to understand what they're doing and, and learn from that. So you talked about learning from those other brands. What, what is it about learning that is important to you? Because I, I don't know everything, right? So like I have to constantly be looking at what's happening in the world. And it's not just the marketing world. It's like paying attention to what's happening in pop culture, paying attention what's, to what's happening, um, you know, on the street around you. Uh, you know, like if I just look inward to what I like and what I think, then I'm missing a whole opportunity out there. So, um, you know, as a marketer, you have to be connected to the world around you. And I really, you know, work hard to try to do that and make time for that. It's easy to get focused on just your job and what you have to deliver, but you have to understand kind of the people you're impacting with your product as well. What do you think is the most important marketing trend today? Something that we're probably doing at Oscar, which, uh, you know, could be scary for some people, but um, we're trying to, you know, figure out kind of the balance between doing creative work in-house and even doing media planning in-house and working with external partners. And something that we've started to do is kind of instead of having, you know, like a main agency for everything we do, working with best-in-class partners on a variety of platforms. Um, it's quite challenging for an internal marketing team because it then requires you working with, a ver you know, a ton of different folks. Um, but it gives us like a ton of flexibility creatively, uh, flexibility in the media plan, flexibility in our spend, while giving us a chance to work with like people who are just really good at what they do. Um, and I've seen other companies starting to do that or have done that in a way. I don't know if it's a trend, but it's just like something that you know we're testing out that I think uh, should be should be thought about. I've definitely been reading more about the um, brands bringing things in house as well. How do you make those trade offs between you know picking a uh, say a niche partner um, versus you know a more full service partner? I'm just curious. For us, you know, there's such rapid growth, um, and but there there are many of us who have been there just from the beginning, 
and we know that then we know the company so well. You know, we're living and breathing it and building it. And it can be hard to bring someone in from the outside and then have them quickly really get that. I mean, there are, there are companies that have done that, and we've worked with some you know, amazing partners who really do get that clearly. Um, but oftentimes, it just, there are just certain nuances to the way that we operate, the way that we think about the consumer that um, not everyone gets. I'll give you an example. We're a health insurance company, but we're a consumer brand. We're focusing on people. Um, and oftentimes I get, you know, vendors who want to work with us and they use other health insurers as an example of what's great about what they've done. Well, if you stop and think about who we are and how we present ourselves, it's not the way in. Um, but when we find those partners who actually like think beyond just the label of the company, uh, you find a good partner in that group. But oftentimes, like just, you know, looking inwards, you're going to find, you know, that that great creativity, but you still need the right partner to actually execute it and bring it out. So again, we're in this place of trying to figure out the right kind of balance and that will evolve over time, but we're really experimenting in that, in that area. Does that stress the level of talent that you have to have in, on your team to manage that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, you have to have top talent um, and I'm very picky uh, <laughs> and it, I'm building my team now. You know, I mentioned that it was, it was, you know, just me on the marketing team to start working closely with the co-founders. You know, now we're a team of four people um, and looking to grow more, but it's going to take some time to find people who, you know, are up for the challenge of what we're doing, are excited about it, um, and then also bring that, you know, great talent to the table. What are the key ingredients to that talent, you think? Uh, you got to be scrappy. You know, like we're growing so quickly. Um, you have to be smart, incredibly creative. Uh, you know, these sound like standard things, but these are important things to, to surviving at the company. Um, you have to be up for debating. You know, we, we kind of like take every issue and think it, maybe and overthink it and turn it around and try to find, you know, every angle and permutation. Um, you have to be willing to kind of, uh, you know, teach in some ways too internally um, and share, you know, your experiences, but then also be willing to take on, um, you know, like the input of others who come from a different angle. So you have to be incredibly, incredibly collaborative. Um, and then finally, like, you have to be cool with working without a net, you know, and, and taking chances. Okay. What, what do you think is the biggest challenge that marketers face today? I mean, keeping their content fresh. Um, you know, especially companies that have been around for quite a while. That's got you know, to be a huge challenge for them, continuing to, to connect with people in a meaningful way, um, continuing to stay top of mind. And part of that is you know, telling your story about who you are as a company, but keeping that interesting and fresh over time, and then continuing to move forward as like the industry evolves, as the platforms we use evolve. Um, you know, there's tons of talk about, you know, content promotion now and content strategies and, and what that might look like. And so, you know, keeping your company voice, but finding a way to use those new platforms and, and the right way for you, I think is, you know, has always been the challenge. As a startup, uh, I'm sure maximizing every dollar is critical. Mm -hmm. How did you approach doing that with this campaign? Well, we're, we're very much data driven. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you read some things about us, we talk about, you know, changing the industry and, and doing what we do, um, supported by, um, you know, data, uh, technology and design, right? So data is a really important piece of that. Um, we work with, um, you know, uh, part of the data team um, that manages our acquisition efforts. And so that's like monitored really closely, tracked very closely. Um, and we have really clear goals set as we go into the campaign. But there are also awareness driving platforms that you know, are a little bit more nebulous, but you know, we do awareness studies. We ask people when they call and they sign up for Oscar, how'd you hear about us? Which actually you know, led to understanding that a huge portion of our members hear from friends, which is amazing. You know, another big portion here is about us from the out of home we've done here in New York. Um, so as much as possible, we really are monitoring, testing, and tracking every component of what we do. Um, and then once the campaign is over, because we focus on a certain time of year, 
we do you know, a deep analysis of everything that we've done so we can parse out learnings and opportunities for the next year's campaign. What do you think the future holds, if you have your crystal ball? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think the future holds you know, a lot of, um, not a lot, but more, probably more companies trying to do what Oscar does, which is you know, take young talent, take the talent that's made the, you know, the, that could make the next cool app and use it to actually change industries. Uh, you know, it's, there's a, there's a sp you know, space for the you know, Snapchats of the world and things like that. But there's also a space for changing these established categories. You know, having companies and having industries focus on actual people um, that they're helping um, or that they're selling to. Uh, and I think that it'll be interesting to see kind of what else happens in the healthcare space. Um, what might happen in the financial space, but these big like behemoth industries uh, being changed by small companies that are trying to do things differently. Good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.